with us going into a conversation about centrifugal discharge superheat, it's very important to understand how to use it and why. And the fact that with a centrifugal, the evaporator are typically a flooded. Centrifugal suctions typically run very low suction superheats. And with a flooded evaporator, we want to run that low because we really can maximize our efficiency. The lower we can have our suction superheat, the more efficient of a process and less wasted refrigerants and heat in the transferring process. So our suction superheat is so low that it can be difficult to measure when we're talking in half a degree increments. A YK, as an example, should have a suction superheat of about half to one degree Fahrenheit. You combine that with a suction imbel that's a couple of feet wide, kind of hard to get an accurate reading there. But our discharge superheat is extremely useful in that scenario and really helps us determine how well we're managing refrigerant through the compressor to begin with. How you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I am Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. My main specialties as a service technician was in centrifugal chillers and VRF equipment. And I hope that this resource could be beneficial to you in some kind of way. So if you don't know, your discharge superheat is the difference between your discharge line temperature and your condenser saturation temperature. Now for a lot of direct compression compressors, they can scale up pretty high on that discharge superheat. So on those, you may see 60 degrees at times between scroll or say a recip, and it'd be fairly normal, you know, 40 to 60 with a high load on those compressors to be expected many, many, many times. Now screws run a little bit lower, but we also typically have a slightly more advanced system with a screw. So we're gonna be able to hone that in, but a centrifugal, we really have to control that discharge superheat. Now. On the low, low end, you might see somewhere around 15 degrees of discharge superheat in my experience with most centrifugals. And that's a system that has a fairly minimal load that's not having to work a whole lot and the lift is fairly low on. And I'm not saying that there aren't some specialty nuance applications out there that they run even lower than that. But most of the time, with a normal operation and say a reasonable load, you're gonna see about 20 degrees of discharge superheat. And that can scale up to about 40 degrees, depending on the specific compressor and what your conditions are. Now for a centrifugal, if I start seeing above 40 degrees of discharge superheat, or if I start pushing that 40 degree barrier, I'm gonna to start to really look at what's going on in the system, is everything okay? ideally i'd really rather stay in between that 20 to 30. like there's that's a it's a fairly tight window there but if you can manage that and do that with a heavy load on a system you're doing pretty well with your refrigerant management and how everything's working but as i hit that 40 degree mark and then my temperature continues to scale above that okay something's wrong here what's causing that superheat to rise so high at the same time if i start seeing that discharge super you get very low we're saying get down below 15 degrees on most compressors. I'm gonna also have the questions of what's happening on especially our evaporator side. So one of the dangers, an extremely dangerous fact with centrifugals is if you run too low, the liquid refrigerant will start to pull off as little bubbles from the top of the evaporator. And you'll have these little bitty tiny BBs of liquid refrigerant getting passed through. So if that half a degree of suction superheat turns into a quarter of a degree, for example, well, those little BBs turn into quite literal buckshot going into your centrifugal imbel. So pulling my little example off here, this actually happened to this. Now this wasn't refrigerant that was hitting it, it was oiled. This, this particular compressor was in a mag bearing machine. These do not take oil and it was used in a retrofit application. When they retrofitted, they did not properly clean the oil out of the system. And this impeller has little dings in it right on the, the tips of the veins where that oil was able to hit and make contact. Well, liquid refrigerant will do the same thing if it's able to get to this impeller. It will completely shred that aluminum. So that becomes your risk when you start running really low suction superheats, which is gonna be reflected in our discharge superheat. If we can keep our discharge superheat up, then we know that our suction superheat should be reasonable. 
Now, in terms of how to actually control this, ultimately, it does come down to where are you controlling the liquid level in the evaporator. If you're running your liquid levels too high, which could be overcharge, could be a metering device issue. Either way, if you're running those levels too high, that's going to drop that suction superheat pretty dramatically. At the same time, if you run them too low, then you're going to see that discharge superheat spike. Obviously, your suction superheat's going up. But there could be mechanical issues happening in that compressor that even with a proper suction superheat, if we have heavy mechanical wear happening that's not supposed to be there, we may see that as elevated discharge superheat coming out of the compressor. So just something to be aware of is you may have good level, which if you have good refrigerant level in the evaporator and your refrigerant is in proper condition, meaning it's pure, but yet you still have a high discharge superheat, then you need to start analyzing the mechanical operation of what's going on in that machine or do you have a high lift scenario for some reason. Anyway, these are just some entry level points to a centrifugal discharge superheat. If you'd like some more education like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I do have an intro to chillers course where I can take you through this whole process, break all this down for you, we can have a deeper discussion around it. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you around.